So we're going to start out by splining our T boxes and bunkers first. And the way I like to approach my course when I'm splining is I like to do the smaller things first that are actually going to be on the top. Because if we do the big things like the fairways and the rough, which take up the majority of the surface area, the little things are going to be hidden or you're not going to be able to see the satellite overlay underneath them to trace out the little things in the workflow. This is just the way I do it, and I, I would suggest that you go through and you'll find your own workflow, okay? With maybe you decide that you like to do roughs first or things on top, but I, it, I feel like, you know, turning the shapes on and off so I can see the satellite overlay can be a little bit cumbersome when I do that. Again, it's up to you. So we're going to start, I'm going to start by showing you uh, tee boxes and bunkers first. So let me bring up uh, Hershey Country Club. And we're just going to do the first two holes. Actually, maybe we'll do three holes. But again, best practices for you guys, just do two holes first. That way, you can, and I'm, when I say two holes, through the whole process, get it into GS Pro and play those two holes. That way you understand, okay, the things that you're, do, you're doing now, how they impact later on. And then you can come back and you can make better informed decisions when you do the rest of your course. So, this is hole one right here. Now, you'll see, now up here, this is a practice area, so we're not going to do that. I, as part of the course, I might come back and do it later, but this is hole one here, and you can see the bunkers are pretty clear. This is hole two over here, and you can see, again, the bunkers are clear. This is a green. We'll do the greens in the next video because that'll take a little bit, a little bit longer to explain. Um, but the tee boxes are in this area, and it's not exactly easy to see. Now, what you have to understand is this is where our multiple satellite overlays and our hillshade comes in. Because if I turn on hillshade now, you can see that I got a flat area right here, which is actually a tee box. And I got some flat areas here. And you can see bunkers actually show up pretty clear on here as well. So hillshade can give you some idea of maybe where some things are hidden. So that's where the hillshade comes in. And it also does some other things, which are covered in some other videos. Now, if I turn off the, my Google and I turn on my Bing, you can see, ah, with my Bing, things are much more clear. And the way I'm going to do this is there is a very forward tee box right here. There's another tee box here. There's another tee box here. And there's another tee box here. Okay, so I'm going to spline my tee boxes first. So I'm going to come over here to my Bezier curves. And I'm going to make sure that I have my B spline path highlighted um and i'm also going to come down here and i'm going to find my t box where's my t that's semi rough rough deep rough t now you can see when that pops up if you're looking down here um and let me turn on my uh mouse highlighter here so you guys can there we go so when i highlight over top of this and you see that pop up it says t Blend 0 0.2, 0 0.12 meters. That means on the outside of this shape that I'm drawing, later on inside of Blender and subsequently later on inside of Unity, we talked, we talked about a lot of theory earlier, there's going to be a blend in there. So a 12 centimeter blend between my T and whatever it connects to on the outside. So that's how you determine. It's not going to show up in Inkscape, remember, but it is going to show up later on. So with that set up as T, I'm set up as my drawing tool here, my draw Bezier curves. Curves. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to zoom in nice and close to my first tee box, or not, or right here. And you can actually see the the mode lines on there as well. And this is a round one, so I'm just going to remember I'm going to be very deliberate when I do this. I'm stopping and I'm clicking. What I want to avoid doing when I do any of my shapes is clicking and dragging at the same time. I'm going to be very deliberate and close that. And you can see when I click away here and I go into my node select tool that everything is very smooth. OK, I don't have. Oh, I do have a sharp edge right here. And if you zoom in, you can see how there's a sharp corner right here. These are things that can be problematic later on. And when you say, oh, why did I have an error in Blender? It's most likely because of issues like this. So if I come here and I have my node tool. You can see that I actually had two nodes there. You have to be very careful about issues like that. I always check when I close a shape that I do not have double nodes like that. It is very difficult to avoid. So you can see in this case what that looked like. It was very subtle, 
um, but I have kind of a sharp corner here. And when I highlighted that, you can see that I had two nodes stacked right on top of each other. Okay. Now, also, what I can do to help and avoid issues later on, I'm going to leave that double node in there. Um, I'm going to highlight all my nodes. And then I can come up here to this tool and I can add another set of nodes in between them. So I've just doubled my now amount of nodes. And then I can come up here and I can auto smooth. And now what that's going to do is it's going to smooth out this shape, but it does not get rid of that double node, as you can see. Now it actually comes forward, forward even more. And if I click here, there's my double node. Now it's just two round nodes. So I'm going to delete that extra one there. And I'm going to come back here. I'm going to highlight that guy again. And I'm going to auto smooth. And you can see now it's smoothed out. And that's much better. Okay. Much better looking. Let's see, do I even have another one in there? Oh my, that was a triple. Okay. So good example, guys, of things you need to avoid. That 100% would have given us errors later on in Blender. So that is a triple node. I always check. Okay, when I close out a shape like that, so the last click you made, wherever you clicked, just check to make sure you do not have any double nodes. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen enough and it will cause you havoc later on. Okay, so that is our first T. Now what I'm going to do is let's just show you another one in case I run into some problems here. I'm going to go to my draw tool. You zoom in again. It's kind of hard to see this one, but you get an idea of, of kind of where it's at. So first node. And we'll see if we get another double node when we draw this shape. Okay. Now this one goes underneath this tree. That's generally, it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't get so uptight. Now if I come in here, very click. Ah, what do I have here? I got another double node, I believe. Let's look at this. Go back to my node select tool. Yep. Double node. Okay. Delete. So do I have, let's see here, do I have snapping? Yep, I got snapping disabled. You don't get them all the time, but enough that you should definitely be weary of that. Another thing here is I think I got the wrong color selected. I think this looks more like a rough to me because I'm used to seeing these colors, you guys maybe not. So let me go back here and highlight this. T, yep, I had rough selected. Now, I'm not going to show you guys me going through the rest of these. You've seen what a double node looks like, how to correct that. There's another one right here, another T box here. There's another T box here. Okay. And then I would go up to the next hole, which is, uh, let's see, right here is my next hole. And there's some T boxes here. I'm going to kind of skip those for now, but you guys can go ahead and do it. I'll come back at the end of the video and show you my end result. But let's do a couple bunkers first, all right? And we've got these bunkers here. Now, now that I've got my bunker highlighted, go back to my draw tool. I'm going to come down here to bunker. Now, what does this say for bunker? Bunker is a 12 centimeter blend, okay? So that's the outside blend. So between the outside of the bunker and whatever color it's going to be connecting to, that's a 12 centimeter blend. But we also have this 0.18 meter inset. So that is a blend on the inside of the bunkers. If you remember from the theory, bl bunkers, 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 bunkers have an inside blend and so does water, okay? The reason being is we can work with the lips on the inside, inside of blender. Um, and the same thing with bunk uh, with water. We've got the, the banks on the outside, if you want to call them the, the water banks. So we can work with those inside of Blender and blend those colors. So those are unique to those. Subsequently, though, we have to be extra careful about how we draw our bunkers because those blends, because we have a blend on the inside, which is fairly thick, 18 centimeters, we can start, if we bend those bunkers too much, we're going to have cutting issues in Blender. Okay, so let's draw this bunker out here. Now, what also can be handy is to look at ink. Now, it's my hill shade's not as good for drawing on here. Let's look at my Google. Ooh, my book Google's nice and crisp, though. I might actually work on the Google on this one. It's okay to flip back and forth. You just need to make sure that these align really well, because what you don't, it's really close. You just want to make sure that if you flip back and forth, you don't have like one, um, 
overlay that's a little bit different from the other okay so it's fine to flip back and forth as long as you align those perfectly and that was covered in a previous video so let's draw out this bunker and I'm going to be very careful here to get nice and close now remember as I'm drawing this we do not ever want to cut through bunkers with other shapes so we always want to make sure that our bunkers are the top now this corner right here that's pretty tight so I'm going to draw that like that whoops looks like it shifted back to t-box and come down here and make sure that is bunker um, we always want to make sure that these tighter corners are are you know not too tight and not too sharp but let's take a look here so I ended this up here and let's take a look I'm going to check my node make sure there's no doubles see this one did not end in a double node so no problems there everything looks good um, for the sake I'm going to add a set of nodes here to select all I'm going to add a set of nodes and then I'm going to round these out so that looks pretty good and all those are circles i don't see any diamonds and i could always change these a little bit and you can adjust these to your liking now i'm being very tedious here if i do this for the whole course <laughs> it's going to take forever now this one over here looks a little sharp aha see that another double node this is the stuff you guys got to be very careful of so let me just show you you get an eye for this but you should look around here and you see some things that are fairly sharp um, so this is this maybe this is where I where I started my shape but you can see here that is a double node and then you can see kind of this comes to a point it's very subtle but get an eye for that and try to spot them that'll often cause a lot of problems inside of blender later on and pull that guy out delete and me go back to this guy again auto round I think that might have been a triple it is it is a triple node <laughs> rid of that or is this even a quadruple this is nuts good troubleshooting for you guys to see this yep that is a triple <laughs> triple bogey <laughs> there we go so guys you got to be pay really close attention to that stuff so more so far I'm three for three in, in these shapes so let me draw one more bunker here to see if you guys can see this as well uh if i get another one so i'm going to start right here so we know exactly so always pay attention to where you start so we can spot those doubles clicking around i'm being very deliberate i make sure i stop my mouse when i click here and then my last one boom i think i got another double there we'll see go to node mode yes so this i think is actually a cusp node see how it's a slightly different it's a diamond and it's small like that it's a different color yep so we had another double there again guys be careful with this you cannot have those double nodes no easy way to avoid them it's an inkscape thing sorry not an opcd tool thing so now i've got our bunkers drawn now let me show you um one other thing that you have to make a decision on which is whether you're going to do like a semi like a double uh area around your t-boxes so you could have your t-boxes like this and then you would have rough over here so your t-box would blend into your rough but maybe you have a fancier course where they've got like a semi around here and this is where we set up earlier our outset so what we can do here is we highlight let's go to our selecting tool and we highlight that t box shape and we're going to do a control d all right now i've got two of these t boxes and they're stacked right on top of each other so if i hide this one you can see i'm hiding it i don't see anything well that's because we've got two t boxes that are stacked right on top of each other so i've got the top one and then i have a bottom one in here as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top one and first of all I'm going to change it to semi rough you can see that semi rough has a 12 centimeter blend okay remember that's important to understand later on in this case I'm going to change it to semi rough now that semi rough is on top and if you recall we did a outset I did a half meter outset so I'm gonna hit control 
zero, and you can see that grew a little bit, it actually grew out half a meter. But I still don't see my T box. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do highlight that shape, okay? Come over here, click on it, and if I hit page down, you can see it moves down the hierarchy, all right? Moves down the list, and now my T box, okay, that we did earlier and that we made a duplicate of is now on top and will cut through my semi. So now I have this really cool cut where my T box is on top, my semi is underneath, my T, 12 senior blend, will blend into my semi, and then my semi will blend into whatever comes out here, which is most likely a rough. You do not need to do this. I tend to do it initially, and then you can always come back and delete these, okay, rather easily. So I like to do them and get into the rhythm of doing it when I'm doing my T's, um, and then later on. And I don't like this one. This is looking really kind of boxy. I'm probably going to redo this shape, but let me just show you that workflow again. So I've got this T. I'm going to control D, so I've now duplicated it. I'm going to change it to semi. I'm going to control nine, I'm sorry, control zero outsets, control nine insets. So I'm going to outset that once. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit page down, which moves it down. And now I've got this T and one on outside of it. Typically, when you do that, it won't ca uh, cause double nodes. It's certainly possible, though. So just be aware, the most common thing when you have these shapes is for double nodes. So this one doesn't really have any. I don't see any, but the easiest way to check is just pull those out. It looks pretty good to me. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to go and I'm going to do the rest of my bunkers on these uh, two holes. And then um, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back to show you what my bunkers and my greens look like on uh, these two holes. Okay, so I am done with my T boxes and bunkers on my first two holes. Now, what I did here, just to show you some flexibility, this is the driving range over here. So I did the T boxes over here on the driving range. So you can see these big four blocks, those are the driving range T boxes. I did the bunkers on the driving range. Um, I did the driving range on hole one. I did these bunkers that are part of the training facility out here, the bunkers around the green, the bunkers over here on, um, so this is over here, this is hole two, which actually I didn't put those in. Well, let me show you what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at here, is that I have hole number one here. I included actually hole nine uh, in hole one, okay? This is just the flexibility. I felt like logically that these should all be kind of tied together. It's really up to you how it's just remember this is what you see is what you get and it's up to you how you organize things and then i ended up putting hole two which you can see here and i have my fairways turned on at this point i'm spoiling this for you guys is i put hole two in its own layer as well um again guys best practice here just do a couple holes start to finish that way you get a feel for the entire process okay um on to the next video